Good morning, everybody. And I have the honor today of welcoming you all to the University of Dundee. And you are indeed very, very welcome. It's great to see this hall full of new students. But first, I have a piece of formal business for the university, which also involves a welcome. And this is something you can help me with. Because the most senior position of the university is our chancellor, who's the ceremonial head of the university. And today, we install our new chancellor, Jocelyn Bell Burnell. In Dundee terms, she's also a fresher. So she is in much the same position in, as you in that respect. Jocelyn is a world famous astrophysicist. <clears throat> she's also part <clears throat> of what I imagine is another sizable contingent of arrivals to the university from Northern Ireland, including some of you in this hall. Because we have a special place in our hearts for all of our students from Northern Ireland who formed such a strong part of the university community over many years. And you're not just from Northern Ireland, you're from all parts of Scotland and from around the world. And everyone here, wherever you're from, is very, very welcome. It was almost 50 years ago, while still a postgraduate student, that Jocelyn made a remarkable scientific breakthrough when she discovered pulsars. Pulsars are highly magnetized rotating neutron stars that emit a beam of, el of electromagnetic radiation. And her life story has been about breaking new ground such as that discovery, very often against the odds. It's a story that I hope will inspire all of you as you embark on your university studies. So let's go back to the beginning. It's small town Northern Ireland in the 1950s. And as a young girl, Jocelyn loved astronomy. Her interest was sparked by the books her father, an architect, brought home when she was helping design a planetarium. However, there was a problem. Aged 11, Jocelyn, and suspiciously almost every other girl at her school, failed the 11 plus. Fortunately though, Jocelyn's parents were sympathetic when she said she was not the domestic science type, and the school were persuaded to let her study science. And next term, she came top in science. At 13, she set off to boarding school in York and took A-levels in maths, further maths, and physics. From there, she went to Glasgow University to study physics, one of only two women in the class of 40. And then she proceeded to Cambridge to embark on a PhD in radio astronomy. Jocelyn herself describes how Cambridge felt to her. <clears throat> My education in Northern Ireland, York and Glasgow did not prepare me for the suave confidence I found in Cambridge in autumn 1965. I was provincial and female. Cambridge men seemed very clever and some quite keen to let one know it. I was overawed and concluded that my admission as a graduate student had been a mistake, one which would be discovered and I would shortly be sent down, deemed too stupid to succeed in Cambridge. This resonates with my own experience. I too was offered a place at Cambridge at a time when I would have been the first person in my family to attend university. And that prospect, frankly, unnerved me, so I chose to follow a different route. I've therefore always been determined that this university will be as welcoming as possible to all of our new students. I know Jocelyn shares this view and will support our efforts <clears throat> to make you feel part of our community from the start of your university experience. Dundee is a place where people from all backgrounds can thrive and do thrive. Of course, Jocelyn overcame her early apprehension at Cambridge her first two years there were spent building a new style four-acre radio telescope. 
and she was the first to operate it. Here she is, building the telescope. She discovered something completely new, radio pulsars. And her discovery opened up a whole new branch of astrophysics. But what happened next has become a matter of scientific notoriety. Because it was not Jocelyn, but her then supervisor and another astronomer who were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics for her discovery. No matter that Jocelyn had been the first to observe and analyze the pulsars and to realize their significance. Many prominent astronomers spoke up at the time and have done so since about this travesty. But Jocelyn herself is characteristically circumspect about these events. She recalls wryly that her male colleagues congratulated on her engagement to be married but were completely silent on her major scientific discovery. Her response has been a lifetime's commitment to improving the status and number of women in science. Jocelyn has talked candidly about the challenges for women in science in the 1960s and 1970s. After finishing her PhD, she got married. Her son was born a few years later. Her then husband, who worked in local government, regularly moved jobs to secure promotion. So despite having made a Nobel Prize winning discovery, her career became a succession of jobs with limited academic prospects. And she looks back on this time of her career as snakes and ladders. Finally, she got what she calls a lucky break at Bath University, becoming Dean of Science in 2001 and then president of the Royal Astronomical Society, then president of the Institute of Physics, and today is a visiting professor of astrophysics at Oxford. In 2014, she became the first ever woman president of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. And she characterizes her career as peaking in her 70s. One does wonder what more could have been achieved if her achievements had been properly recognized earlier. But what is remarkable about Jocelyn that she has, she has not forgotten the challenges that she faced, and she has committed her professional life to making science a better place for both men and women. <clears throat> and that resonates very strongly with the ethos of this university, which was set up um, by a philanthropic donation to serve the men and women of the city. As president of the Royal Society of Edinburgh, Jocelyn has relentlessly championed women in science, technology, engineering, and maths. She has led investigations, published reports, spoken widely, and lobbied governments. She has done whatever it takes to challenge the practices and assumptions that made her rise in science so hard won. When she came to Dundee in 2016, to inspire the next generation of women scientists and become an honorary graduate of this university. <clears throat> she reminded us all that we stand on the shoulders of others gone before. She made such a strong impression on everyone she met at the university that it became a natural choice to ask her to become our new chancellor. Inevitably, Jocelyn does not have much spare time. However, in what little she has, she loves to garden, to listen to choral music, and she has edited an, anth an anthology of poetry with an astronomical theme. She is also an active Quaker, publishing over 30 papers on faith, contemporary issues, and science, in addition to her prodigious scientific output. Dame Jocelyn's story is not only one of stellar scientific discoveries, but an extraordinary example of a life well lived in the service of science education, and opportunities for all. And now after telling you a little bit about Jocelyn Bell Bennell, I, I now want to move to the formal uh, installation of her as our chancellor. And to that, for that, I need to uh, read the following formal words. It is provided in the charter of the university that the chancellor shall be appointed by the university court after consultation with the Senate. All forms have been duly observed, 
and the court has been pleased to appoint as Chancellor Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Now therefore, on behalf of the university, I install you, Jocelyn Bell Burnell, as Chancellor of the University of Dundee to hold that office in accordance with the provisions of the Charter. I, Jocelyn Bell Burnell, hereby declare that I will at all times and seasons fulfil the duties of Chancellor as prescribed by the Charter of the University, that I will loyally uphold and maintain the rights and privileges of the University, and that I will endeavour to promote the purposes for which the University exists. Thank you, Principal and Vice-Chancellor, for your very generous introduction. I am honoured to be a part of this forward-thinking, leading university. Over the summer, I have enjoyed meeting staff, recognising the excellent work that happens here, getting to know how the place works, and I'm grateful for the time that all sorts of staff have given me to help me learn. I'm looking forward to getting to know the university better and to getting to know the city of Dundee better as well. I have a sense that Dundee is going places fast now. My greetings to all the new students I hope to meet a number of you informally over the next few years. Our next formal engagement, folks, is here in about four years, five years time. When you graduate, your exam exhausted brain will be juvenated by this chancellor bonking you on the head with a cap. You will graduate. The University and the Students' Association have lots of support organisations to help you if you have issues. And everybody is willing you to graduate. You will have to do some work, of course. And you may not graduate in the subject that you think right now you are going to graduate in. Because one of the things about university is you come in contact with lots of other subjects that you've never met before and you hear about exciting research that hooks you. I hope you find your time here interesting, exciting, challenging, but not too challenging and I hope you make the best of your time here. You are committed, I am committed. I think they've taken away my chair. <laughs> I've got a new one. It's a bit overawing, but never mind. My very good wishes to all the incoming students. I look forward to meeting you, and I look forward to meeting more of the staff of the university as well over the next few years. Thank you. big Dundee welcome to our new Chancellor. You'll be able to tell the folks back home that your Chancellor has discovered more stars than Simon Cowell. <laughs> we now move into the, more, the main welcome part of the event and I ask back to the microphone your Principal Sir Pete Downs.
Thank you very much. Yes, it's me again. Um, and now um, I want to do, um, uh, give you all a very big welcome from me personally, from the staff uh, of the university, uh, from the students who are already here, and from our students' association. You're going to hear from many people uh, over the next, um, next few minutes all the great things that you have the opportunity to do here in the university. And for me, um, this day is one of the real highlights of the academic calendar. Because every year the university is refreshed and strengthened by the, by the arrival of a new generation of students. And it is truly wonderful to see you all here in the Caird Hall. And being here in the Caird Hall <coughs> with our Lord Provost um, uh, sitting here too is a great symbol of the positive relationship that we have between the university uh, and the city. And so make sure that you enjoy not just what the university has to offer, but what the city has to offer too. Because you've arrived in one of 2018's must-visit places around the world. Because that's a status that's been accorded to this city by no less than the Wall Street Journal, Lonely Planet, CNN, The Guardian, and many others. So you're all right on trend. These are exciting times for the city and a sign that we are firmly on the rise. Much of this current excitement, of course, has grown around the imminent opening of v Dundee, <coughs> housed in Kengo Kumar's magnificent building at the heart of our waterfront. It was an idea that first originated here at the University of Dundee to bring the v to the city. And we've worked with local and national partners to help make it happen. It realizes Kengo Kumar's vision of providing a living room for the city and all its people. I urge you to explore it for yourself after it opens next week. It is a project that has the potential to transform our city. And that word, transformation, is a core theme for the university. And I hope that in your time here in Dundee, you will be transformed by the experience of being at this university, in this city, at this time. What we can offer you is learning and living at one of the world's top 200 universities. You are joining a community that includes students and staff from more than 140 different countries. In the National Student Survey, we've again been placed among the very best in the United Kingdom. The latter is something that is critically important to us as it is based on the views of your immediate predecessors as students here. Combined with the results of the Teaching Excellence Framework, which gave us the highest possible gold ranking, it again shows that Dundee is one of the best places to be a student. And I believe you will find <coughs> that throughout your time here at the university, um, you will um, come to uh, understand what a great choice you've made and feel the benefits of it well beyond your time here. We have a drive to encourage innovation and enterprise and to prepare our graduates to make an impact on the world beyond university. Our record on this is also exceptional as we are among the top universities in the UK for graduate prospects. Our primary mission is the creation, sharing and application of knowledge. It's at the heart of everything we do and it should come through in the lectures, tutorials and practic practical work in which you are involved. In your core studies, we'll offer you excellent teaching, support, and facilities. Gaining a degree as the next great step in your education is a prime reason you are all here. But there's also much more to be gained from your time at university, and so much we can offer you and help you with. We don't just want you to get your degree. We want to make sure your experience at university is a rich experience which gives you the best opportunities to find the career you want, to pursue the activities you are interested in, and to find new friends. The possibilities which lie before each and every one of you right now are endless. The proof is there for you when you look at some of your predecessors whom we have recently honored. They include Anu Jadir, who last year became the first non-white judge at the Old Bailey. <clears throat> Gary Lightbody, who formed the band Snow Patrol while he was a student here. That's a band, of course, that had gone on to worldwide success. Dr. Saleya Hassan, 
who graduated from the School of Medicine and is a practicing A&E doctor, a former captain in the Royal Army Medical Corps, and a broadcaster, well known for Trust Me, I'm a Doctor and other, pro and, and other programs. And David McKenzie, an Oscar-nominated film director. All are Dundee graduates who've gone on from their time as students here to be leaders in their fields. And our commitment to you is that we will give you the opportunities to find your own voice and make your own impact. As well as excellent teaching, we provide the opportunities to work with businesses and organizations all over the world. Your Students Association, D DUSA, D Dundee University Students Association, is a vital part of this as well. Ours is a community where you should feel welcome, safe, and supported and be able to have a great student life. Together, we will do all we can to ensure that is the case. Whatever you want to do, however you want to make the best of your time in Dundee, <coughs> we will look to help you. All of this is on offer in Scotland's most student-friendly city, here at an extraordinary university. I believe you're about to embark on a university career that is among the very best you'll find anywhere. These can be, should be, and I hope will be, the best years of your life. Make the most of them. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks, thanks Pete. Uh, you've all chosen Dundee, you've chosen to come to Dundee, the city of discovery, and, and who better to welcome you to this city than its Lord's Provost. I'd ask you to put your hands together a moment to welcome Scotland's longest serving councillor, the ever youthful Lord Provost, Ian Borthwick. I think this is magnificent, and it's a long time since I've seen the hall so full of uh, students and others and I've, se I've seen many many uh, assemblies in this place. However, ladies and gentlemen, honoured guests, welcome to the city of Dundee and the university. I am sure that before deciding to come here to study at the University of Dundee, you did your research about living and learning in the city. Some of you may have had friends or family who have attended the university or worked here, who were on hand to give you all the fantastic reasons to come to Dundee. But despite your obvious thirst for knowledge and your hunger for information, I am not going to swamp you with even more. I want to share just one more piece of advice with you that I hope is useful and helps make your time here beneficial and memorable. Enjoy yourselves. We have some wonderful ar architecture, an interesting social and political history, and the city's setting on the banks of the Tay is second to none. We are also a changing city, and you will get to see it transform before your eyes over the next few years. So what I would suggest you do is to make the most of it. You have a wonderful opportunity and I am delighted that you have chosen Dundee to realise it in. So work hard, achieve your objectives, and above all, have fun. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Provost, really cementing the really strong link there is between uh, Dundee Town and down Dundee Gown, the university in the town. Our next speaker is our university chaplain. You may have met uh, Fiona and I yesterday afternoon handing out free saucepans, amongst other things. Um, I'd like you to put your hands together to welcome our chaplain, Fiona Douglas, who it's known as married more young people than Madonna, but I'll let her explain. Thank you. Fiona. Thank you for the welcome, Graham. Good morning, everyone, and I'd like to add my own voice to the chorus of welcomes you're receiving to Dundee University. I hope you feel thoroughly welcomed by now. 
I'd like to take this opportunity, if I may, to say something very briefly about the University Chaplaincy Centre, which, if you haven't found it already for the pots and pans, is, is located right in the middle of the campus next door to the Student Union building, where I know for a fact some of you have found your way there already over the weekend. It is important to say that the chaplaincy does not associate itself with any particular religious faith or group. We are open to students and staff of all faiths and none, and that is very appropriate. Our facilities are used by different groups, both within and out with the university. And I hope, if you've not found it already, we are a place of welcome and hospitality, a home from home, whether you're coming in for a concert, a Cayley, a service, a meeting, or even to sit in our coffee bar and have lunch, um, which just happens to be the best on campus. But hey, I'm not biased. If you're interested in music in any way, our director of music is based in the chaplaincy, so come and see him. We have various choirs and orchestras that take part in university events. So you see, the chaplaincy is there to offer resources, to try new things, to volunteer, expand your CV, to attend fun events, or even to come to a religious service. Everything is there. And we also have Muslim prayer rooms on campus. We have a great team of honorary chaplains from all the different faiths. So please do come in and say hello. Now, as you have heard, I have conducted weddings for staff and students over the past few years. And I have married, I have to say, not personally, but three past presidents of JUSA who've been married in the chaplaincy. And I'm still waiting for a sports union president, but I'll, I'll work on that one. I've even married couples who have met, wait for it, the very first day of Freshers' Week here in the Caird Hall. So you might be sitting next to or near your future partner right now. So have a good look around. <laughs> You can move seats, that's okay too. <laughs> now I say this every year simply because it does break the ice, but I'm not touting for business, it really has happened. As you're finding out, the university is a community, a community of people working together. And I know, as you've heard, you'll make many, many good friends here. It's exciting, there's much to offer. But in the midst of that, Please remember that we are all here, all the services working together to support you, as Dame Jocelyn said, so that you never, never have to struggle on your own for anything. Please take advantage of all these things. Well, now you've seen me, I will finish. Now you know where I am, who I am. If you see me on the campus, please say hello. If you see me in the gym, take pity on me. I have a red face. If you see me in the union, please buy me a drink, but perhaps not all in the same night. In the meantime, I wish you every success and every happiness in your time here, and I look forward to seeing as many of you as I can over the next few years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fiona. We now move on to the welcome from the student voices. Uh, so next up is our student president, Dusa president, the still single, Sophia. So I'd like you to welcome onto the stage, Sophia. everyone can I just say no pressure on getting married or anything as such from this university so hello everyone and welcome to the University of Dundee you made it and it's actually only the beginning by the way I hope you can all understand my accent but we will see by the end of the speech it is my absolute honor to congratulate you on being with us today and for the rest of your university career and how lucky are we all not only are you joining us for the opening of the V&A Design Museum next week, one of the most highly anticipated projects the city has ever seen, but during the ceremony, we inaugurated the incredible Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell as our new chancellor, marking the beginning of a new era for this university. It was six years ago today, I was sitting where you are. I hope I don't look that old, realizing that some of you might be, were born around the 2000s, um, but it is monumental days as such that make you realize, the, realize later on in your life how far you've come and still have left to go. When I came to Dundee from Greece, this is where the accent comes from, 
And I know some of you might be wondering, why did I leave my beautiful country with amazing food to come here, especially with weather such as today? But I slowly realized that a few days here, this place would become my home away from home. This university is great, but the student life is one of a kind. From a student representative council that drives change in our university, nominations are open by the way now, so if you wanna bring this change, please join, just a small advertisement. Um, to a fresh sphere that is one of the best in the whole UK, with, which is next Saturday, by the way, a lot of free pizza and pancakes with over 200 student societies. The university is great, but the student life is one of the kind, as I said already. Most importantly, I'm sure you've all heard Dusa the Union. Maybe the Cypher's nightclub, maybe the one that we're meant to bring Danny Dyer from Love Island, but we actually are bringing Alexandra Kane. Please don't submit any complaints on that. Um, even more important, though, is to let you know that we are a charity for you. Every drink or cup of coffee you buy from Dusa or any Krispy Krems from the Premier, all the money are being reinvested back to you. We are the executive team of eight officers, students and graduates of this university that were voted in last year. Me, as a president, I'm here to represent you. Charlie, yes, <laughs> our very outspoken vice president of academia. Claire, our creative vice president of communications and campaigns. Jolly is our passionate vice president of student welfare. Olaf is our strong vice president of representation. Craig is our enthusiastic vice president of student activities, and our two non-sabbaticals, volunteers who are still studying, Tony, our confident vice president of engagement, and Scott, our kind vice president of representation, as you can see, all of them standing. We're a strong and dedicated team, but would be nothing without each and every one of you. So whatever you need, please come and speak to us, to our student hub, which is the Hive in level four in DUSA, the Union. We can only move forward if we work all together. We want to empower you, our students, to be able to speak up and experience a unique student life. There is a reason we have been voted by our students as the best student association in Scotland for many years now and one of the top in the UK. I can guarantee you we're doing something right. A few words though to pay attention now. I know that most of you might be scared, first time away from home or from your closest friends, but these are going to be the best years of your life. And there's a reason why I still haven't left ND Life is beautiful here, sometimes, not always, but sometimes. My recommendations to you, from one student to another, is be active, be kind, and speak up. You are in the best place you could be right now. Jump into this opportunity, this university, and make a promise to yourself, and don't let go that you're actually gonna become the superhero you are hiding inside of you. Make a new beginning by showing this university and the world your true potential. Michael Jordan said, you miss 100% of all the shots you don't take. So please make sure you take those shots in order to write your own story. Because you always forget you're the only one that holds the pen. Thank you. <clears throat> thanks, thanks, Sophia. Well, next up is our sports union president, superhero. Doug Dundee's rugby star and sports union president. He's moved from the back row of the scrum to the front row of the stage. Big welcome for Jacob, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your first few days of Freshers' Week. I did. And I'd like to give you a warm welcome to Dundee. It's a great time for the city at the minute. My name's Jacob McConkey. I'm a recent graduate from the university and last year I was elected into the role of Sports Union President. So the Sports Union, we oversee and develop many aspects of student sport, providing as many opportunities for students to get active and involved within our sports clubs as possible. We have over 40 different sports clubs and we compete all over the UK, giving students opportunity to travel. We work closely with the ISE, which is just on campus, to ensure we provide the best coaching, facilities and equipment available for use. I also work with a fantastic student executive team, some of which are behind me now, and we're all working towards the same goal, and that's to provide students like yourselves with the best sporting ex student experience possible. There are so many ways to get involved, whether it's continuing to play a sport you have at school, such as basketball, netball, rugby like myself, and then the clubs range all the way through to skydiving, 
wakeboarding, and even snow sports. Our clubs cater for all levels, from recreational and social fun, right through to high-performing athletes. We had four students last year from the university that went to the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games to compete. Many of our teams compete against Scottish universities on a weekly basis, and later in the year we have the opportunity to travel up north to England and compete against English universities. Every year we have our varsity competition in which we compete against our neighbours, Aberdeen University. They are yet to win. This sees us go head to head against them in many different sporting disciplines and it's a great opportunity to get involved whether you're playing or supporting. I can say that sport had a massive, massive influence on my time at university. It contributed to some unique experiences and I made some great friendships here. It's a great way to try new things and meet new people. If you're not ready to join a sports club yet, we have plenty of events such as campus sport, charity relay races, give it a go sessions. So just come into the sports union for a chat and it's easy to get involved. Our annual sports fair is on Friday the 7th of September. And that's on campus green just outside the Dusa building. It's from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's packed full of committee members and players from all different sports clubs. They'll give you all the information you need and get you signed up ready to train. I'd like to thank you all for listening. I'd like to wish you all the best for your time here in Dundee. I know you have a great fun and pop into the sports union if you ever fancy a chat. Thank you. Thanks, Jacob. Our final welcome speaker is our student rector uh, who's recently cycled around the world very impressively in less than 80 days amongst many, many other achievements. Put your hands together, please, to welcome local lad, the one and only Dr. Mark Bowman. Good morning, everyone. I wonder if you've noticed that we've been joined by an unexpected guest on stage over the last hour. In the bright lights, we've had a butterfly. And I was thinking that what a wonderful metaphor and sort of physical representation for the small decisions, the moments in time which can end up defining your entire life and career. The butterfly effect, little decisions, acorns of ideas, who knows where they'll lead. For me, it's about getting furiously busy with what's in front of you. And my goodness, there's something quite exciting in front of you all. So Dundee, your new home from home. Our principal, Chancellor, Lord Provis, our chaplain, our students have all welcomed you brilliantly to the magnificent Caird Hall, which leaves me, your rector, the challenging role to add something new, something useful, something need to droll. Our McGonagall proudly remembered as the worst poet in history, lang, rambling, repetitive, clumsy, terrible rhymes and full of mystery harsh. It's the benchmark which I aspire to here. <laughs> Welcome, one and, all, one and all, to your new home. You're here at last. Jute, jam and journalism with one eye on our past. Today we have gaming, the waterfront and our great university. Tomorrow is yours through education, yes, and your tenacity to overcome adversity. You missed our 50th birthday along the shores of the Silvery Tay. So I hope you make up for this and bring us a treat and make the most of your freshers week. Whilst your head may be spinning and it feels like you've landed on Mars, let's talk astrophysics, pulsars, rotating neutron stars. A huge welcome to D J Dame Jocelyn Bell Burnell, our new chancellor, our leader. We know you'll do well. I've been somewhat absent whilst peddling around. The world in 80 days, a few records we found. It's a great joy to come back to where it all began, a 12-year-old boy with a bike and a plan. My role as rector is to represent you all, so do say hello, no matter is too small. I hope you feel welcomed. This will soon be your home. You're now part of the family, so you're never alone. Welcome to Dundee, your home from home. As I said, we were making history today with the uh, installation of our new chancellor and also our debut for our poet, uh, Rector. So thank you very much for that. That's it. You've been, I hope, well and truly welcomed. 
uh, once we, the procession has left, you will go forth from this hall, hopefully up to where the welcome tents are. We have a programme of over 90 events this week, merging into Freshers' Week. So lots and lots of activities for you to get involved in. People wearing blue T-shirts are there to help you, so if you've got any questions, do ask. People in red T-shirts tend to work for McDonald's, so do, do not confuse them. Please, please try to leave the penguins where they are. I've had a few issues. Um, I'm going to leave you finally, though, with a quote from a former uh, student rector, Stephen Fry. And he said, University is like joyriding in a multi-story car park. Fun on so many different levels. Enjoy. Thank you. Please be upstanding.